Hello, and in this video we're going to talk about frequency distributions for sets of data. As an example, suppose you ask a subset of your friends what their age is and then record the results. And let us assume that the results are given here. So the only ages that people responded in your subset is 17, 18, 19, and 20, let us assume. And let us also count how many people actually stated that their age was a cell. Suppose those results were 5, 13, 15, and 9. So what type of information can we get from this? So one question you may ask is, what is the average age of this set? So, recall that we can find the average of a sample to be the sum of all of the x values divided by the sample size. So remember, this is equal to x1 plus x2 plus all the way out to xn divided by the sample size. So if you add up all of these values here, what do you get? Well, you should get that there is 42 sample values that you have taken here. So that means this sample is going to be equal to x1 plus all the way down to x42 divided by 42. So another way of writing this in summation notation is the summation from, let's call it, say, k is equal to 1 to 42 of xk divided by 42. So if you see this, this may be just an abbreviation for this expression. Now there is another way that you can actually do this. So if we actually look at our data and we actually plug in these values, what will we get? Well, this is just going to be 17 plus 17 plus 17 five times plus 18 plus 18 plus 18 13 times, plus 19 plus 19 plus 19 15 times, and 20 plus 20 plus 20 9 times, all divided by 42. So this is 5, this is 13, this is 15, and this is 9. So using some algebraic simplifications, we can actually rewrite this in a more simple way. This is just equal to 17 times 5 plus 18 times 13 plus 19 times 15 plus 20 times 9, all divided by 42. So this calculation manually will be a lot more simpler. Once you do so, you should get that x bar is approximately equal to 18.6. So is there a more simplified way of calculating the mean if you're given the frequencies? So x bar typically is equal to the summation from k is equal to 1 to m of xk divided by m. But if you have the frequencies, we can group these xks up by their corresponding frequencies. So you can also say so that x bar is going to be equal to the sum of what? So these are the x values multiplied by the frequency of x, which I'm just going to write by x. So this is going to be x times f of x divided by n, where this sum is across all sets. So in this case, there's four of them. There's the set of 17, 18, 19, 20. Some people call these bends, some categories, and so on. So what about the median? Is it easily to find the median of a set of data if we have a lot of values? So remember, the sample size is equal to 42. So that means we have x1 all the way down to x42. And let us assume that this is already ordered. So if it is ordered, then that means the median of this set 
is going to be the middle value. So remember the middle value is going to be what? It's going to be 1 plus 42 divided by 2. So that's going to be x43 divided by 2. Well, 43 divided by 2 is going to be an odd number, so that's not really useful. So in that case, then that means this is just going to be the average of the two middle values, which is simply going to be x21 and x22 divided by 2. Notice that 21 plus 22 is going to be equal to 43. So these are the two values that are in the middle. So you can calculate this by observation that x21 is going to be 19. This is going to be 19, and this is going to be 2, and that's going to come out to 19. So how do I come up with that observation so quickly? So remember that 17 is going to be repeated five times. So this is x1, and this is going to be x5. If this is listed from least to greatest, the next is going to be 18, and then it's going to be 18. So this is going to be x6. There's going to be 13 of them. So that means what? That means 18 is going to be in position x of 19. So the next number in sequence is going to be 19 all the way out to 19, and there's 15 of them. So this is going to be x20. x21 and x22 are going to be soon after this first 19. So that's pretty much how I can quickly gather these values. So what do we have? Well, we have uh, x bar is equal to 18.6 repeated, and the median of this set is equal to 19. So what does that mean? So recall, if the mean is less than the median, then the data set is skewed to the left. What does it mean to be skewed to the left? Well, that means most of the data is on the right. So one may also ask, well, is there an easier way to calculate standard deviation for this data set? And the answer is yes. So recall that the standard deviation of a data set is going to be equal to the square root of the summation from k is equal to 1 to m of xk minus x bar squared divided by m minus 1. So remember, a few of these terms are going to cancel. So we can actually abbreviate this more simply by what? Well, this is just going to be the, sum, the square root of the summation of x minus x bar squared times x divided by m minus 1, where this sum is over the categories. So if you were to actually write this out, that's going to be the square root of, so there's only four categories, so this numerator should only have four terms. So this is going to be 17 minus the mean, which is 18.6 repeated squared, times the frequency of them, which is five, plus 18 minus 18.6 repeated squared, times its frequency, 13, plus, 19 minus 18.6 repeated squared times its frequency 15 plus 20 minus the mean 18.6 squared times its frequency 9. All of that added up together and divide by n minus 1. Once you do that calculation out, you should see that s is equal to 3.53. And this is another way that you can calculate the mean median and standard deviation if you're given the frequency. So, summary. So usually x bar is calculated to be equal to the sum of all your x's divide by m, or the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the sum of all your minus the sample mean divided by m minus 1. So if you have the frequencies, you can calculate this more simply as the sum of all your x's times divided by m. And remember, multiply, then add. 
and the standard deviation can be calculated in a very similar way. This is just going to be equal to the sum of all our x minus a's times, remember, multiply before you add, divided by n minus 1, where this sum is over n, and this sum is over Same goes for both. And that's how you can calculate the mean standard deviation of frequency distributions. And of course, you can calculate the medium for the same way for both. Uh, but if it's a really big set, it's usually a little bit more difficult. So it's usually going to be x1 plus n divided by 2 in general. And if this number is not an odd number, then you can just take the average of those values. So you may also graph the frequency distribution. So let us assume I have x here and I have f of x here. And I have four categories again, 17, 18, 19, 20. And I have three frequencies. Well, I have four. I have five, 13, 15, and 9. So if I graph this, I'm going to have 5 here. The frequency of 18 comes out to 13. The frequency of 19 is going to be 15. And the frequency of 20 is going to be that. So this is the graph of the frequency distribution. You may see some people connect these dots with a line. That's what some people refer to as a frequency polygon. But it's not always necessary to graph that. But it sort of shows that, okay, well, if this is the middle of the set of data, well, there's clearly a lot more in this area than there is the left, right? So this is pretty much what it means skewed to the left, where most of the data is on the right-hand side. And that's a quick breakdown of how to deal with and interpret frequency distributions.